Hello and welcome to GameSack. It's here at the Sega Genesis Mini 2 with a bunch of new games and even some Sega CD stuff. A lot of people were surprised when it was announced that it would even be released in the US and Europe at all. Sorry Canada, looks like they'll probably have to do some workarounds in order to get this. It's coming out with very little fanfare from Sega themselves and the rumor is, is that it'll only ever be available from Amazon in this single batch right here. I just checked and it's still available to order at the time I'm making this video. It costs $100 plus shipping from Japan, which is where all these are coming from. It cost me $135 to get this here, so let's see how it stands up. Here it is, the Sega Genesis Mini 2. Let's just peel this dumb sticker off. Fortunately, it removes quite easily. The box is tiny, significantly smaller than the box that the Genesis Mini 1 came in. They were still able to pack it pretty well inside here and they wasted no space at all. It comes with a Genesis Mini 2, unsurprisingly. A single controller instead of two like the first Genesis Mini, but thankfully it's at least a six button controller this time. An HDMI cable for 720p output, anyone remember 720p? A USB cable for power and a USB power adapter. Kudos to Sega for including this when so many other companies these days are way too cheap. The unit is smaller than the Genesis Mini 1 by the same amount the real consoles are. And it's pretty much exactly like a real Genesis 2. It has a fake cartridge slot, working power and reset buttons, USB connections for your controllers, and HDMI and USB power connections on the back. Even the little cover for the Sega CD slides off. Overall, pretty cool. This is based on the Japanese console, so you'll have a power switch instead of a button like you do on the US models. There's also no LED that lights up when you turn it on. This just goes to show you how this was really only intended for Japan and they just kind of added the US and European versions as an afterthought. The controller feels good, but uses a different plastic than the originals. It's perhaps a bit stiffer, but not by much. It performs well during actual gameplay and I had no issues with it. Unlike the previous Genesis Mini, this one lets me use the Astro City Mini controller or joystick. It didn't work with any other USB controllers I tried, however. Powering the Genesis Mini 2 is supposedly a more powerful CPU to help handle the CD games and 8GB of NAND flash storage. When powering on the unit for the first time, you select your language. Then you're presented with the game menu, and there are 60 of them here to choose from. Actually, 61. You can choose to view them as spine labels if you'd prefer something more compact. If you switch the language to Japanese, you get the Japanese cover art and versions of those games where applicable. The menu's background music is once again composed by Yuzo Koshiro and it plays homage to a ton of different games included in this collection. You have the same options as the Genesis 1 Mini, meaning you can stretch the screen to 16x9 to fill everything up, or you can be a normal person. You can also engage a CRT filter if you want. I gotta say, this looks absolutely horrendous. This might have been fine back in 2012, but these days it just won't do as it darkens everything and it looks like a lazy mess. You can choose from a variety of different wallpapers or you can turn them off completely, which is nice. As for the image, you get 720p as your only output option and it looks good. There's no shimmering during the scrolling in most games. However, on the low resolution games that are only 256 pixels wide, you will get a small amount of shimmering. However, if you put your Genesis Mini 2 in 16x9 mode and stretch it, there's no shimmering at all, so you could engage this mode and have your TV shrink it back down if it can and if it bothers you that much. Weirdly, in the stretched 16x9 mode, I noticed these graphical glitches which don't exist in the 4x3 mode or the real game itself. The black levels are elevated, so you'll never achieve a true black, but instead dark grays at best. There's no toggle for full or limited range color space. Interestingly, you can choose if you want to emulate the sound of a Model 1 or Model 2 Genesis. The Model 1 has more of a low-pass filter on it, and as a result, the Model 2 sounds less beefy, but with more high-range clarity. I like that they included this option. The sound emulation isn't 100% perfect, but overall I think it'll be plenty fine for most people. Unfortunately, the sound lag that affected the first Genesis Mini is here as well. The sound is delayed about 6 to 8 frames.
This sound lag is here no matter if you have the sound set to emulate the Model 1 or the Model 2 console. Sega CD games are also affected by this. Using the same video capture setup with a real Sega Genesis, there's no delay at all, so it's not my capture hardware. During gameplay, you can tap the mode button to call up a menu and deal with your save states, of which you have four. You can also reset the game or return to the main menu. You can disengage the mode button shortcut and just use the reset button on the main console if you prefer. This would be helpful for any games that use the mode button, like Fatal Fury 2. Sega is blaming the small allocation of units on the chip shortage, and this also influenced the amount of money that they were willing to use to license games that either are on this or could have and should have been on this. Now, if that's the case, I really think they should have waited for all that to sort itself out before releasing this. Anyway, we've got 61 games on this thing, so let's cover each and every one of them in the order that they're listed on the menu when it's set to alphabetical. First up is Afterburner 2. This is a port of the arcade game that's pretty sparse, but the gameplay is the first one on console to be this close to the original, at least here in North America. Alien Soldier. This was never released outside of Japan in real life, but it came over in some collections. It's a great run and gun by Treasure, which focuses heavily on boss fights and dashing. It takes a while to get the feel for this game, and it's been some time since I've played it. Atomic Runner. This is way better than the arcade game, and honestly, most people overlook this one. It's a fantastic title once you get used to the controls, which could take a while. Bonanza Brothers. Break into various places, shoot up cops, and steal items. Then make your way to the blimp to escape. This isn't a bad game at all, but it's not the classic that Sega seems to keep thinking it is. Clay Fighter. I have no idea why this is on here. Nobody wants this, especially the inferior Genesis version. It's an awful game. Seriously, what were they thinking? Crusader of Senti. This is a great action RPG that takes inspiration from Zelda and is also very much its own thing. It does start a bit slow, but once it gets going, you'll have animal friends to help you out. It's definitely a good thing that this one is on here. Desert Strike. This isometric helicopter game from Electronic Arts is a good one and the first one in the series. It'll take you maybe one or two minutes to get used to the control. Then you're off to saving the world and having a blast while doing it. Devi and Pi. This is a game that was canceled before it was ever released. The game is in Japanese regardless of your language settings. You control two paddles. The one on the bottom moves with the D-pad, and the one on the top with the A, B, and C buttons. It doesn't feel natural at all, and I have no idea what they were thinking when they designed this. I don't like it. Earthworm Jim 2. Earthworm Jim is back for more shenanigans. I never got much into this one, as I feel the first game is far superior, but here it is if you like it. Whoopee! Echo the Dolphin. This is the first CD game on the list, and I'm glad it's the CD version because it features incredible music with Q-Sound audio. This game basically has you solving a bunch of different puzzles. Echo, The Tides of Time. This is the sequel, and again, it's the CD version included here. The Q-Sound is even more aggressive in this release. Elemental Master. This is a nice vertical shooter from Technosoft. You can shoot ahead or behind you as you earn different weapons after you beat each stage. All the while, you're treated to some incredible music. Some of the sound effects are a bit off in this one thanks to the emulation, but it's not objectionable. Fantasy Zone. This is a new port of the arcade game for the Genesis, just for the Mini 2 release here. And look, they use the SGDK, which is what most homebrew games for the console are made with these days. Anyway, this is a great port of the arcade. Sure, some colors might be missing or a touch muted, but it's still really close to the original. Not only that, but the sound is fantastic as well. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference without listening to them back to back, and even then it's pretty close. 
All around, it's an incredible conversion. Fatal Fury 2. This is a pretty good port of the Neo Geo arcade game. I like that you can enable a faster speed. There have been some cutbacks, but it plays quite well and it takes advantage of the six button controller. Final Fight CD. This is an excellent port of the Capcom arcade game for the Sega CD. All the characters, two players, and a nice CD soundtrack. If you change your language to Japanese, you get the uncensored version, which shows a bit more skin in the intro, as well as more skin on Poison and her clones. Game Ground. This is a game that everyone says is a hidden gem. I don't know, I've never really been able to see what all the fuss is about. To me, it feels too slow. I say try it for yourself, though. Golden Axe 2. This is a good follow-up to the original game. They fixed the six-button controller issue so you can play it just fine without holding the mode button as you power on the console, unlike the real version. Definitely worth playing. Granada. This is a super cool overhead, um, shooter? I'm not sure exactly how to classify it, and honestly, it doesn't matter at all. All you need to know is that it's super fun. There's a ton of energy in this game, which makes it an absolute blast to play. The music is great as well. Hellfire. This is a decent shooter from Toa Plan. The music plays at the correct speed regardless of if I choose the Genesis Model 1 or 2 emulation styles. In real life, most Genesis Model 2s would play the music in this game far too fast. Herzog's Y. One of the first, if not the first, real-time strategy games. It's super fun once you learn it. You'll need to use the QR code to view the online manuals for this one. Bring a friend who knows what they're doing for twice the fun. Lightning Force. One of the best, if not the best, shooters ever made. This one has a high speed mode, which gets rid of some of the slowdown, but not all of it. If you set the language to Japanese, you can play the game under its real name, Thunder Force 4. I'd really like to meet the person or people at Sega of America who decided to rename it to Lightning Force. Seriously, I need answers, and they should be made to answer. Mansion of Hidden Souls. This CD game is a grainy FMV adventure game where you're looking for your sister. It's honestly not bad, but it does seem like a rather odd inclusion here. Still, try it out. Midnight Resistance. This is an odd run and gun. Don't let the controls scare you, they're not hard to master at all. The action is good and the music is amazing. Night Striker. This mega CD game was never released outside of Japan. It's a pixely mess that makes it hard to tell what's going on sometimes. It plays kind of like Space Harrier and it's worth trying, but your eyes might hurt after too long. It does have some nice arranged music. Night Trap, the controversial FMV game where you trap augers. And it's the original Sega CD version with a Genesis controller. That's the only way to go if you ask me. Outrun. This is a decent but not incredible port of the arcade game. The tracks are laid out in a different order here and there is one new musical selection. When I get the urge to play Outrun, it's never this version. Outrunners. This is a rather poor conversion of the arcade. A forced split screen mode and scratchy audio doesn't help this poor looking game. Worth trying once though. Fantasy Star 2. A step backwards in most ways from the Master System game, but still a good RPG overall. This one includes an easy mode. Don't be afraid to use it as it'll help you level up faster. They also soften the flashing lights in the battles. Populous. This is Electronic Arts God Simulator game. It's not bad. I really don't have anything more to say about Populous. Rainbow Islands Extra. The extra mode in this game features new enemies just for the Genesis Mini 2. I'm personally not a huge fan of this game. Parasol Stars is better. Ranger X. This is an excellent mech action game. 
It uses the six button controller to move your little scooter around. Once you get the hang of it, you'll have a great time with this one. Ristar. This is a fun little action platformer. I think the game would be 10 to 20 times better though if they got rid of every single voice sample in the game, especially the ones in the music. They sound embarrassingly bad. Play with me. Robo Aleste. This is a pretty good vertical shooter with some cool music. If you like shooters, then this one will keep you busy for a short while. Rolling Thunder 2. This is an excellent follow-up to the first game. Not easy by any means, especially since you can't shoot while jumping. It's not as good as Shinobi, but come on, it's Namco, what do you expect? By now, some of you may have noticed that both Lunar Games as well as Potful Mail did not make it over, despite all three games being on the Japanese version of this thing. Well, Sega did contact Victor Ireland of Working Designs, and he said he was totally down to do it and even offer upper and lowercase text for the Lunar Games that hasn't been available before now. But he also says that they offered him a very low one-time fee, and Sega basically blamed that on the low allocation of units. I mean, it kind of makes sense since the US and European versions of the thing were a complete afterthought. Anyway, back to the games. Sewer Shark. This is an FMV crosshair game where you need to guide your craft as well. I do not recommend this one at all, reason being that it's not very good. Shadow Dancer. Ah oh, yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. This is an excellent ninja action game. You die in one hit, but the game is balanced so well that it's not an issue. I can make it to the last boss even if I turn shurikens off in the options. Fantastic game. Shining Force CD. Two of the Game Gear Shining Force games on a single CD with great music. This is an excellent strategy RPG that's extremely addictive. Shining Force 2, another great strategy RPG. This has lots of fun town scenes that were not in Shining Force CD. Once again, it's very addictive. Shining in the Darkness. This is the very first game in the Shining series. It's mostly a 3D dungeon crawler and it's one of the better ones for sure. It's not as good as the other Shining games, but it's definitely worth a try. Seal Feed. This is a decent tilted shooter. It plays okay, but the star here is definitely the super cool backgrounds. Sega accidentally left the cuss words in, which can be accessed in the voice test. God damn shit, hell! Damn it! Damn it! God damn it, hell! Hey men, take them from the rear! Thanks for corrupting our kids and ruining our society forever, Sega. No child should ever hear words like that. No telling what might happen. Sonic 3D Blast. A technically impressive isometric Sonic game. This game went to the future and stole some of its music from Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. I'm not sure why Sega thought that the world needed this game. Sonic CD. Here it is, Sonic CD Adventure. You can choose from the US version which has redone music or the European version with the original music. The problem is that the European version is too slow and has lots and lots of judder in the scrolling. So if you want to play with the original music and speed, change the system's language to Japanese. Space Harrier 2. Okay, I have a lot to say about this one. M2 wanted to rebuild Space Harrier 2 to give it smoother scaling and make it more like the arcade version of the original game, which means this version is all new. That's cool. I love playing with the smoother graphics and the redone music makes me love those tunes even more. However, this remake kind of drops the ball in a few areas. First, there's now tons of flicker where there was very little before. M2 said that they expanded the VDP, or Video Display Processor, to help with the scaling effect. Why? To me, this seems to have exacerbated the flicker tenfold. I think if they would have stayed in spec and just used super smooth pre-rendered sprites, it may have fared better. But instead, they seem to have crammed real-time scaling in there. If they truly did expand the VDP, well, they didn't expand it enough. Next, while the music is definitely better, the sound effects are much worse. 
They're now all poor quality samples for some unexplained reason. Get ready. Get ready. Next, all of the sound will sometimes shift left or right briefly for no reason. This was still fun to play through though, and it's as easy as ever. Maybe if they had more time with it, they could have worked out the issues. They don't include the original version of Space Harrier 2, which might have been a wise move on their part. As you can see, it's indeed choppier, but flicker is much less of an issue. You can also choose to play the original Space Harrier. This attempts to bring the arcade game to the Genesis. The flicker here is even worse. It's truly awful to play. The sound is good, but man, that flicker just ruins everything. I think the Genesis could do a much nicer version of Space Harrier on its own if the programming were better. Again, maybe they just didn't have enough time. Oh, and of course, since M2 is behind this port, the Sega Master System exclusive boss Haya O is in here. I'm really glad that they believe in giving this game a true final boss. Still, it's space area, so of course I love it even though it's awful. I do really admire M2's intentions, though. Spatter. This is a new port of an ancient arcade game to the Genesis. Ride your tricycle around and collect the flowers while avoiding the enemies. I'm not sure why the fence moves when you jump. It's honestly not bad, but it seems odd that they'd want to port this. Splatterhouse 2. This is a direct sequel to the first game and it plays just like that one. I still prefer the first, especially when it comes to the audio, but this one is pretty fun as well. Star Mobile, or Star Mobile? This game was being developed back in the day and then got cancelled until now when it was finished up. I'm not really sure what the point of the game is. Keep the scale as balanced as you can, I guess. Different colored stars weigh different amounts. It's incredibly easy as I keep beating each round without any difficulty whatsoever. Streets of Rage 3. This one gets dumped on a lot, but it's absolutely worth playing. Too bad Sega of America changed the character colors to make them look ugly for some idiotic reason. You can switch the language to Japanese to get the good colors back, but the game is still censored. It goes straight from this scene to this one. That's right, they removed this scene entirely because of Ash. So, gonna have to recommend you play with the ugly colors on this one. Super Hang On. This is a fun arcade motorcycle racing game. I wish they would have given this one the scaling treatment. It probably wouldn't have as much flicker since there really isn't a lot on screen. It's still fun the way it is though, but some people may find the controls a bit laggy. Super Locomotive. Another port of an old arcade game to the Genesis. Why? This one isn't even that interesting. You guide your train along the tracks and avoid stuff. No thanks. Super Street Fighter 2. This is a good fighting game that takes advantage of the six button controller. Unfortunately, the sound isn't that great despite its massive amount of memory. The Ninja Warriors. That's right, they listed it under T. This CD game was only released in Japan. This is a rather average ninja game with some great music. And that's really all I have to say about this one as it's quite unremarkable. The Ooze, another one filed under T. This is an odd game where you guide a sentient puddle around the screen attacking enemies and interacting with items. This is the first time I've played it. Hopefully it's the last time, but I'm sure that the real version will find reason to appear in a future episode. The Revenge of Shinobi. This is a fantastic ninja game. This is also the most butchered version of it. No Batman, no Spider-Man, no Godzilla, no Rambo, different title screen face. Still, that's no reason to ignore it as it's quite awesome. Toe Jam and Earl, Panic on Funkatron. This is a side-scrolling sequel that many people prefer to the original game. 
You have to capture all of the humans who have infested your planet, bottle them up, and send them back to Earth. Crazy graphics and sound help make this one a good time. Truxton. This is the best version of this vertical shooter in my opinion. This lets you choose between the original Genesis music or the arcade music. They're pretty much identical, except that the Genesis music is a lot faster. I wish they had offered the PC Engine version of the music as it exceeds all other versions by far. Vectorman 2. This is a technically impressive game, I suppose. I've never really been able to get into the Vectorman games, especially the second one. But it's here if you like it. Viewpoint. This is a moderately decent port of the Neo Geo game. Such an odd one to include, though, as it looks pretty bad if you've ever played the Neo Geo version. Virtua Racing. This is the only Genesis game that used a helper chip to improve the visuals. The emulation here seems fine and it runs as well as the original. It's fun, but there's really not much meat to this game, even if you win. Versus Puyo Puyo-san. This is a newly made port to the Genesis. This originally appeared in the arcade, PlayStation, Saturn, Nintendo 64, and whatnot. I guess it's a decent port, but you only seem to be able to play in practice mode unless you have two players. Pretty lame. Finally, we have Warsong. This is known as Langrisser in Japan. It's another great strategy RPG, though visually it's more of a cluttered mess than the Shining Force games. It's still awesome though. The Genesis Mini 2 is a great device for lovers of strategy RPGs because it has three great ones here. There you go, the Sega Genesis Mini 2. It's an interesting collection of games, but really they should have waited another year or so in order to get a bigger allocation and a lot more games that people actually want onto this thing, like, I don't know, the Working Designs RPGs or maybe Snatcher, a lot of people want Snatcher, or how about Road Avenger? That's another one they tried to get the license for that they couldn't quite do. Or where's Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia? Anyway, what do you think of the Genesis Mini 2? And do you think there's going to be a Genesis Mini 3? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Man, I just can't do this. This is just too big, don't you think? No one wants to play Musha on something that big. Not in this modern age where everything is being shrunk down. That's huge. This, this just won't do. Yeah, smaller is better. I mean, you know, for some things, not, not 